Hi guys, so we are going to get started with the digestive system lecture and Miss Brown and I have decided to split this up into two lectures. So um, we'll do digestive system part one and then digestive system part two. So um, we just wanted to make it smaller chunks. In the first part, we're going to go over the digestive systems of um, the ruminants, non-ruminants, monogastrics, cecal fermenters, also called hindgut fermenters. Um, so we'll go through those digestive systems. And then in the second part, we're gonna go over the digestive system processes and um, the major uh, nutrients. So those are the two um, digestive system lectures and um, We'll get started. So um, as always, we're gonna go over the notes first so you know um, which notes go with which, with which lecture. So uh, let me show you where things are at. So we are in unit three body systems and um, we're in modular eight. So we just scroll down past the muscular system that we already did. And uh, here's the PowerPoint we're going over, the digestive system PowerPoint. Let's see if I can highlight that. There we go. Um, so the um, digestive system um, PowerPoint that goes with your student workbook. And there we go. There we go. Um, Digestive system PowerPoint to go with uh, the student workbook right there. Here are uh, the notes we're going to go over right now. And then here is part two right below it. Um, so and then you have the rest of the digestive system work. So this is the PowerPoint we're going to go through. So let's get started. So let's take that off and head into the notes because we're going to go over those first. All right, so um, I did mark these as digestive system part one. Um, you do probably wanna grab um, a highlighter and make sure you have a pen or pencil available to jot down some stuff. Um, and um, some color pencils might be helpful as well. Um, you could color in the different segments of the digestive system for the ruminants, monogastrics, and cecal fermenters, AKA hindgut fermenters. So if you um, wanna go grab those now, just pause the video and um, go get those so we can get started. All right, so we start off with the terms to know. So I will go through um, all of these terms to know as um, we go through the two PowerPoints, but, um, but here they are um, all in order. So um, I would definitely make sure you review these, especially before the test. All right, then moving on. So all the words I'm gonna to say to you are written here. So we like to give things to you verbally um, in writing, and we also like to add those visual and hands-on um, things throughout the unit so you can learn stuff. So we have ruminants here in the different sections, the parts of the stomachs there. Uh, Non-ruminants, also called monogastrics. Um, and then we have cecal fermenters, also called hindgut fermenters, that we'll be talking about. Then moving on down, you will be labeling things. So here is our ruminant, our cow is our uh, model for that. Then we move down to our monogastric. The dog is going to be our model for that one. And then we have our horse is our model for our cecal fermenter, um, also called hindgut fermenter. And that is that for um, the first set of notes. All right, so let's continue on to the PowerPoint. And uh, we're gonna start from there. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, give you all these labels right here. Um, so as I talk, if you want to start labeling things, that's fine too. Um, or you can wait till the end. So, all right. So, um, 
Proper nutrition for animals requires knowledge of the digestive system, the basic nutrients, which we will get to in the second um, lecture, and the ways in which foods are um, formulated and marketed. And we will do that more in your senior year. Uh, proper feeding and nutrition can prevent many health um, problems and diseases. Good nutrition is um, especially important for pregnant animals and animals recovering from uh, surgery or illness. So we need those things to help um, make sure that not only we as people, um, we need that good nutrition, but animals as well to recover um, from any of those um, injuries or surgery or illness. All right, so let's move on to uh, the ruminants. So ruminants have a four compartment um, stomach. So their stomach has four compartments and we're gonna learn about each of them. The largest one is the rumen. Um, it is also called the fermentation vat. So I would highlight that part in your notes. So the rumen is also referred to as the fermentation vat. Um, it's one of the largest compartments that holds about 80% of the stomach's capacity. It contains millions of bacteria and billions of microorganisms um, that um, start to break down um, the food. So it needs that bacteria and those microorganisms in that large fermentation vat called the rumen to start breaking down um, the foods, the silage that the animals eat. Um, they trans the bacteria and microorganisms transform um, the low quality protein and nitrogen compounds to essential amino acids that the cows need um, for growth and reproduction and milk production um, and all those good things. Um, food is also regurgitated from the rumen and uh, goes back up to the mouth and then chewed again um, and then re-swallowed. So this is called chewing their cud. So um, my mom always used to yell at me when I was younger, when I would chew gum, I kind of, you know, those annoying people. Well, I was one of them. Um, and she would always say, Dana, quit chewing your cud. And I never quite understood what she was talking about. Um, but she grew up on a farm and stuff. And um, so chewing my cud, she was referring to a cow uh, re-chewing their food. So uh, cows do start to use their teeth to, to move and break down um, that rough um, silage. A lot, they get a lot of silage and hay and some grains, some concentrates. Um, and they use their teeth to start breaking that stuff down. Um, it gets swallowed into the rumen, it gets regurgitated back up, and they chew it again, and um, and then swallow it again. And then those um, bacteria and microorganisms really start to, to break down that food so that um, the cow can use it. So that is the rumen. That's the first um, part of the cow's stomach. It's the largest part and it's called the fermentation vat. All right, moving on to the reticulum. So we have the reticulum. It's called the honeycomb. I actually have one um, and we'll pass it around class. I know you'll love it. So um, the inner walls and lining membrane are divided into like honeycomb compartments. It actually kind of looks like the cereal a little bit. Um, so, or a honeycomb that a bee makes. Um, so um, it, it kind of has those compartments and you'll actually get to see one. Got it at Jungle Gyms. Um, so um, it divides up into those compartments. Um, this is where a lot of foreign um, material goes, like nails and wires um, and things like that get filtered into the reticulum. Um, so cattle are out uh, grazing on pasture, uh, out on the range. Um, and so they do run into some of those foreign objects. And that is where um, they go to get stored. 
Um, it acts like a collecting site for metal objects, the reticulum does. So um, you can put a magnet, um, have a cow swallow a magnet, and to collect all that wire and stuff, and then it goes into the uh, reticulum. You could uh, then remove it um, if there were to be a large buildup in the cow get hardware disease. Um, you could remove then that magnet and all the wire and stuff connected um, to that magnet. So reticulum, I would highlight the honeycomb um, because that is its nickname. So that is the second compartment we've talked about. Then you have the O mesum. So the O mesum is called many plies. And it is called that because, just happen to have many papers I need to grade. It looks like many sheets of paper um, kind of stacked, here we go, stacked together. So it's called many plies, many plies. So it's like many sheets of paper stacked on top of each other. Yeah, got to get those graded. So um, it contains um, many folds of tissue that line the interior and the O mesum is um, used to absorb water and decrease the size of the food po um, particles. So the way I remember that the O mesum, also called many plies, I would highlight that. The O mesum, um, H2O stands for is water. So um, the O mesum is used to absorb water. So that's how I remember the O mesum absorbs water called many plies, and it has tissue that is kind of stacked on top of each other, like many plies of paper would be. All right, now moving on to the fourth compartment, it is the abomasum. Um, the abomasum's nickname is the true stomach, and um, it is called that because it secretes um, digestive enzymes. Um, and it functions similar to the stomach of a non-ruminant animal, so more like a monogastric. So um, the function of this digestive system um, is used by calves until they're about um, six or seven months old um, when they begin to ruminate. So um, as a calf, um, you are still drinking, you know, milk and stuff like that. Um, so they aren't ruminating yet. Um, and until they do, uh, they just use the abomasum called the true stomach, would hide like that, um, for several months at the beginning. So from there, you move on to the small intestine where other nutrients um, are absorbed. The cecum is the next thing. Um, the cecum is um, for breaking down fibrous material. So they have a rather, rather large cecum because um, they do have a lot of um, fiber to break down because they are, you know, eating that hay and um, the silage. So silage is um, leftover parts of um, corn stalks, um, different uh, leftover um plant parts and uh, they put it all um, can put it in a silo sometimes they put it on a on the ground they line it up under tarps and stuff um, and so that is fed uh, to cattle um, for part of their nutrition so the colon also called the large intestine the cecum and the colon all part of the large intestine and then you have um, the rectum and out the back end. So, all right. So that is um, kind of the the introduction to uh, ruminants digestive system. So let's move on to non-ruminants. All right. So these guys are also called monogastrics because they have one stomach. Mono, one, monogastrics. Um, so food passes um, from the mouth down the esophagus to the single um, compartment stomach. The stomach breaks down um, the food through muscular movement and digestive uh, juices. They have these little uh, wrinkles in their uh, stomach. Those are called rugae. So they kind of 
move together, sing into some reggae, you know? Okay. Well, uh, rug the rugae are the wrinkles and folds of the stomach, and they help to move and break down the food. The digestive juices um, helped out, help to break down um, the proteins um, and the fats. Um, the primary site for digest digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins is then in the small intestine. Um, there are three sections to um, the small intestine, three sections to the small intestine, um, and it's DJI. So duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Duodenum, jejunum, ileum. DJI is how I remember that. Er, 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 you know, like DJ Kelly or something like that. DJI. Duodenum, jejunum, ileum. All right. Again, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, find something else that works for you. All right. Um, and then the undigested food passes from the small intestine into the large intestine, um, also called the colon. You can also see that they have a dogs and cats have a rather small cecum and not a whole lot of fiber. Um, makes up their diet. So more of the large animals, the ruminants have the, the larger fibrous diet. Um, colon, same as large intestine. Uh, undigested food passes from the small intestine to the large intestine where water is absorbed and then lubric lubricate, lubricating mucus is added to aid in the passing of the undigested food material, aka feces goes out the rectum. So that is um, kind of the quick ins and outs of uh, the monogastric or non-ruminant um, digestive system. So dogs, cats, humans, uh, pigs, all monogastrics, monogastrics, one stomach. All right, let's move on uh, to cecal fermenters. So we have uh, the horse here is representing our cecal fermenters. So horses, guinea pigs, and rabbits are all examples of cecal fermenters. They are also called hind gut fermenters because they have that large cecum in their hind gut. Um, and we listened to those gut sounds um, when we did that activity, the physical exam activity on the horses. So we were listening to that large hind gut um, when we were listening to those. So um, they have an, I should probably put this out here for you. All right, so they have a, a rather long esophagus. It's about four, four and a half feet long. And it does go down to a monogastric stomach, so one stomach, um, but these guys are considered fecal fermenters or hindgut fermenters um, is what they're classified as, even though they still have one stomach. Um, they have a large cecum that allows for consumption of moderate uh, levels of roughage. So horses are constant grazers. That digestive system has to keep moving. So they are constantly nibbling on something, either out in the pasture, they're, they're grazing on that grass out there, or they have some hay available to them in the stall um, so that they are constantly grazing. You want them to keep that digestive system um, pretty full. Um, that way you don't run into problems um, when it becomes emptied out, um, uh, things can happen. Uh, gases can form, uh, intestines can go up and switch and flip. And, and when we talked about colic, um, we talked about all those kind of different reasons and things that can go wrong with a horse's digestive system. So, um, the digestive, the digestive juices break down the proteins and fats um, in that, in their stomach as well. Um, and then, um, it enters into the small intestine again, um, duodenum, jejunum, 
uh, jejunum and ileum, the three sections of the small intestine. And then you have that large cecum right here. So this large cecum right here. Uh, bacteria are present in the cecum to help break down um, those roughages that the, the horses are consuming, all the grasses and hays. Um, and then it moves on to the colon, AKA the large intestine, um, and makes its way um, through there. Um, an average horse, a thousand pound horse, is, is gonna produce about 50 pounds of feces a day. So if you go three days without cleaning that stall, you're gonna be hauling out about 150 pounds of feces out of that stall. So um, that is um, our digestive system um, part one. So we went through the monogastric, we went through the ruminant, and we went through the cecal fermenter or the hindgut fermenter. And those are the three parts of, um, or the three um, classifications of digestive systems. So, all right, please make sure you look through those terms to know. Um, I use some of them. I will use the rest of them in part two. And uh, make sure you go over the words that are also written in your notes. Make sure you've highlighted well and labeled all of the diagrams that we have provided for you. You will need them on a, an upcoming test. So, all right, guys, as always, um, if you have any questions, just let us know. See ya. Bye.